Hey guys, what's going on? Lane back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about The Lost Daughter. The Lost Daughter is an American drama based on the novel of the same name, and tells the story of Lita Caruso, a British professor who goes on vacation in Greece to get away from the stress of her daily life when her vacation is interrupted by a family of American tourists, two of whom strike a chord with Lita almost immediately upon arrival. The tourists in question, Nina and her daughter Alina, bear an unusual resemblance to Lita's own family history, which causes Lita to recall painful memories of her own experiences as a mother, forcing her to confront the troubles of her past and to ultimately make peace with them. I was interested to see how this one turned out, seeing as it's the directorial debut of Maggie Gyllenhaal, and I can definitely say right here and now that it does not disappoint. While I didn't find myself as enamored with it as most other critics are, I think it's great as a character study for its main character's struggles associated with motherhood. Olivia Colman's performance as Lita Caruso is far and away the best thing this movie has going for it. She breathes life into every single nuance that could be imagined, from the brief moments of bliss she gets while swimming at the beach, to the momentary joy she gets in talking to someone, and especially the pain she experiences when she remembers her past. She is 100% believable as a woman who made mistakes as a mother, who grew tired of always having to shoulder the responsibility of being one, and desperately seeking to live life like how she used to before becoming a parent. Even when she's on vacation, she can't help but worry about her kids, so she's never able to turn off the switch. This is a good time to bring up that there are two versions to Lita's character. The older one is portrayed by Coleman, and a younger one from several years prior portrayed by Jesse Buckley. The movie cuts back and forth between between flashbacks that show young Lita's interactions with her family, and this is where we get to understand the origin of Lita's hardships. Buckley did just as good of a job in a role of Lita as Coleman did. She starts off carrying the stresses of motherhood as any other mother would, and over the course of the story, she finds herself increasingly unable to handle the weight of her responsibilities, making her react toward her husband and children in irresponsible ways. One might take issue with her character acting like this, but I don't think it's a flaw in the writing so much as it's a well-presented character flaw. Although I'm not a parent myself, I can definitely see where Lita is coming from with regards to the choices she makes. She's a human being like anyone else who simply doesn't know how to handle being a mother. There's a few bits of backstory as well that hint toward her previous family upbringing which was far from ideal, and rather than subjugate her kids to that kind of life, she instead chooses a different path which, while I don't fully agree with, I can at least understand the logic behind it. Even though she's tired, she still cares for and loves her kids deeply. And the consequences of her actions continue to haunt her throughout the modern day portions too. She remains remorseful of what she has done, and seems to be triggered by any little thing that reminded her of her kids, which helped me sympathize with her character that much more. Now, I do think that the flashback scenes can get out of hand at times. There are a lot of them, and it's not always obvious when they occur, which can occasionally break immersion just when I was starting to get into a scene with either version of Lita. In the end though, she still succeeds in communicating her struggles quite well. Even better is that she gets the chance to redeem herself with the character Nina, played by Dakota Johnson, who also did a fantastic fantastic job in her role too. Nina finds herself in similar circumstances as Lita did before her, which gives Lita the opportunity to help where she can. I really like the bond that forms between the two characters. They begin to confide in each other as they spend more time together, and we learn more about each of their perspectives regarding the difficulty of being parents. It's a natural way of developing the characters, especially once parallels between the two become more evident. The only thing I didn't like pertaining to Nina's character is that she claims her husband is controlling, but there's never any scene that specifically hints toward that being true. They have an argument here and there, but nothing sinister ever really happens to her. If anything, her sister-in-law Callie seemed way more controlling than he did. In fact, the rest of Nina's family acts pretty obnoxious if I'm being honest. They make weird and sometimes rude remarks to Lita, and they always stare at her like she's some sort of pariah, which makes no sense because she didn't do anything to earn their scorn. Some of it might have to do with the main plot device of the movie, which concerns a doll belonging to Alina that goes missing, when in fact it was taken by Lita. While this kind of logic is confusing as the family doesn't know for sure what happened to it, I think the doll itself is very interesting in its use. The doll is essentially what kicks off Lita's memories into gear as she relives her history of parenting her children and serves as a sort of twisted way in trying to make up for her mistakes in doing so. However, the fact that she stole this doll also weighs in her mind and only further adds to her burden. I don't want to get much more into the doll beyond this, but I enjoyed how it was used in multiple metaphorical ways, from Lita trying to refine her parenting skills to acting as a bridge between 
between her and Nina's family. There's a lot to unpack from it, and it's great to see this subtle kind of symbolism as opposed to something more overt. The movie can be slow at times, but it makes up for this with excellent cinematography featuring the rural landscapes and seaside towns of the Greek Isles. As someone who was a bit disappointed with Beckett, which was another movie that took place in Greece, it's nice to see a side of the country that doesn't look like it was filmed in a war zone. And as slow as it can be, there are still interesting things that happen with secondary characters, including the caretaker Lyle, who's played by Ed Harris. While the movie's clearly oriented toward the female characters and their trials with parenthood, it was great to see a male perspective in this area too, to help balance things out and further develop Lita's character. Sometimes though, the male characters can be a bit much to deal with. There's a group of Greek kids that appear here and there, and I'm not sure if they're related to Nina's family or not, but they act like total dicks every time they're on screen. They just seem chauvinistic to an absurd degree, and while they don't appear all that often in the movie, they ruin the flow of the story every time they did, and created conflict just for the sake of having it. I doubt most Greek teenagers act like the ones in this movie do, but it was still annoying to put up with them regardless. Overall, The Lost Daughter is a great drama that explores the pressures and challenges associated with motherhood and humanizes its main character without condoning or condemning her actions. If you like slower paced dramas that have a lot of symbolism behind them, particularly one that's centered on the concept of motherhood, I think you would enjoy watching this movie. Even though it has some issues with certain narrative elements and its male characters, Maggie Gyllenhaal made a fantastic directorial debut with a story that is both faithful in its adaptation and realistic in its presentation. This was a solid movie to go out of 2021 with, and I can't wait to see what Netflix has in store for the new year. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of The Lost Daughter. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the Italian comedy for the dinner. Bye bye!